Hello, welcome to the third video in the 5K series. We're closing in on 5,000 subscribers as I'm doing these videos. And this is my way to, well, celebrate that. So the third video that I chose to do today was about, um, or it came as an inspiration from a comment that I received on my affirmations video on this channel, which is the most popular video still. And a man wrote, as a comment to say that his wife has never been like what I've said in that affirmation video. And he said that he didn't know this woman. And in another video, the same man commented that most men are actually lucky to have their wives into sex every now and then. So I said, okay, I feel you. And I'm going to do a video about this soon with some hopeful perspectives for you to maybe cope with the situation better or even solve it. Why not? It is possible. That being said, it can be for, you know, valid for both men and women who are in a relationship and they are having this issue with their long-term partner, meaning they're not having sex anymore. And, you know, they want to figure out what to do about it. So firstly, uh, I, again, I wrote down some notes and I have them on my, uh, uh, smartphone. That's how I scribble down my insights. And I'm going to be looking at this every now and then to make sure that I don't, um, you know, go on too many paths here and not make my points. So first of all, I want to give you some perspectives as far as I've seen in my practice as to why this might be happening for you. Obviously, there can be other particular explanations, but, you know, consider that it might be one of these or if you're ever going to approach your partner, you might figure out precisely and particularly what about, you know, what, what, what is their issue for not, or reason for not engaging sexually with you. So the first one that I'll put here is that uh, they might have a stressful overall period. Maybe somebody close to them is no longer with them. Maybe they had a falling out in their job or they lost their job. Maybe they have a health concern that is really, really big and they're afraid for their lives. And the last thing that they have on their mind is having sex right now. Or maybe there are other reasons, like maybe they have, you know, one of your children is sick and they're, or maybe their dog or their pet, who, by the way, it can also count as a child, even though it's not a human child. So maybe they're having health concerns and they're over the, you know, over the top, trying to figure out and get to the bottom of it, save their lives and so on. So whatever the case may be, in most, like the first most common reason for somebody not wanting to have sex is because they have a major issue happening with them. And again, this can be for longer periods of time. It's not just that one month they're down or two months or three months. Sometimes it can be for years and they just might not want to, you know, their concerns are so big that the last thing on their mind is sex. So consider that one. Maybe it's obvious to you, or maybe it's not so obvious to you, but to them, something is so big, so major, so drastic that, you know, they, the last thing on their mind is sex. Another reason for this is that they might not be enjoying it. Maybe it's something in the way that you engage at certain points, you two, you three, you, how many you are in the relationship and you're experiencing a partner withdrawing from intimacy. Maybe they're just, you know, not that sexually into you, though they love you, though they're committed to you. Maybe they're not enjoying themselves. And at a certain point, it became unbearable. And they also don't want to tell you about it. I've had a lot of men in phone call sessions just one time because they had this issue with their partners and usually those were heterosexual men. So they were dating women. And my first thing was after checking in that nothing major was happening with their women that was draining their life energy. I asked, okay, have you spoken to her and asked her how she feels about sex? Because if, one partner withdraws from being intimate with the other, 
in most cases, if it's not something big, then they're not enjoying it and they don't want to say it because maybe they're afraid that you might be offended. You might take it bad. You might not actually be one to reason with, and you might actually not be able to have a constructive conversation around it. And they don't want to go around, you know, in circles with you and you fighting off every idea that they have. Maybe they just feel that they can't bring up an issue with you. And so they avoid it altogether. That's not uncommon. That's actually one of the most frequent reasons why a partner will withdraw from sex and will not even talk about it. They'll not even say it because they're afraid to have a conversation with you or they're intimidated or they're just, they don't even want to go down that path because probably it's not easy to have discussions with you in general or just around this topic. I know it's not easy to hear, but that might be the case. Third or last, one thing, they might not be into sex at all. And they might have not leveled with you from the beginning. They might have kept an appearance going for some time. And after a while, when they felt like, okay, this is enough, they might have just backed out and that's it. There might not be any major issue with them. They might just, you know, not be so much into sex. But they didn't level with you about this. Maybe they're not aware that this is a thing. Maybe they are aware and they just, you know, they can't be bothered with that. Yeah, that is the case with some people. Some people don't realize that, in fact, you know, sex is enjoyable over long periods of time. And some people can't conceive that couples in long-term relationships they actually enjoy sex well into their 80s, some, yes. Or some people, you know, they know that, they have this issue, but they just, you know, we're committed. We love each other. We got all these stuff going on outside of intimacy. So yeah, it, it's good. Nobody's going to rock the boat with that. Yep. It's also the case. Or they might be getting it elsewhere. This is not the most um, uncommon thing. It's not my first on the list though. Usually um, if they have somebody else, uh, you'll pick it up. You don't need me to tell you this one. So in very few cases, that's the, the explanation and you've just not sensed this in your partner. So whatever the case is, the best way for you to figure out is at a certain point to find a way in your relationship, knowing your partner, find a way to open up this discussion. There has got to be a way for you to open up this discussion. If you've never um, agreed from the get-go that this is a relationship where we talk about things, we don't just shove them under the uh, rug and that's it. We don't just forget about them. We don't just say, oh, it's been a long time, so now we're good without it. No, if we have an issue, we discuss about things. So some couples don't really set this one up. Or maybe they don't set this one up for intimacy. In case you didn't set, you know, you had this agreement from the beginning, it probably will be a little more challenging for you to open up a discussion about something as delicate as sex is because it's not an easy topic still for many people. It is easy to watch porn. It is easy to buy a toy. It is easy to, I don't know, just have routine sex. That's not a big deal. It's not so easy to actually approach stuff that, that maybe it's challenging, that maybe you don't like to say, that maybe you're not so happy with. Those are dreadful discussions for many people. So um, if, that's, if you sense that that's your situation, I would strongly encourage you to open up discussion with uh, a therapist, a psychologist, a counselor, a coach. Stuff like that needs, to, you, you need help around that. And I'm going to put a link under this video to the story menu on my website. I've had a man, recently married man, that took coaching with me a few years back because he was having exactly this issue with his wife. And there was no way he could talk about it. He was super angry about it and frustrated. Otherwise, he loved his wife, but, you know, the sex part was really, really annoying for him. And... I've put, you know, a, a short version of our six-week coaching that we did 
but overall you find the essence of how he turned around the situation. I'm not saying that that might be your case as well, especially if you're not recently married and this is a trend that's been going on for years. If you've been married 10 years, 20 years, it's much more challenging to turn something around. So if you're in this situation and it's been like this for many years, I definitely encourage you to seek support and you know, give it time because it's not something that happened yesterday and now you want to change it. Okay, so the second thing on my list now is something that you can do. I actually have two, but the first one is um, mental and lifestyle shift. That's what I said as a resource. So the most important thing here is to consider that and you're going to hear every psychologist, every counselor, every therapist, every coach, you're going to hear everybody telling you, you can't change others. You can only try to change yourself and do the best that you can to change yourself. It's not freaking easy to change something in yourself. Imagine that your partner is pissed off with you about other things, just as you are pissed off with them about not having sex, okay? And if they ever came to you with a reproach or something that they dislike about you, and maybe you, that would be a non-negotiable to you or you'd have some really negative charge around this, you would have a really hard time changing. So don't, you know, don't push something onto the other person thinking that, oh, but they need to change. Why? Because I say so. No, changing is difficult even when you change because you want to change. It's quintuple difficult, fivefold difficult to change because somebody else tells you that you need to change, but you don't really feel it or you don't want it or you're not committed to that change. Also, uh, the thing is you can't control what your partner will change into. That's another tricky part. Even if they want to transform, let's say that you not nag them, but just, you know, make it a point that you want to work around sexuality and maybe they want to start working around it. Well, you can't really control what they might turn into. They might, you know, free themselves or, or of whatever it was that was dampening their drive, but they might turn into something that, you know, you might not like still. But to them, they've changed. And it makes sense for them to change into that because that's what they want to change into. So those are the two tricks with change. You can't push people to change. You can only push or motivate yourself to do that for yourself. And you can't control what the other person will change into. By the way, it's also healthy to not control what you change into. That's another tricky part because you might want to change into something that you've seen in others, but it might not be the most natural uh, inflow thing for you or even healthy thing for you in your life path and keeping an open mind as to you know what you change into is a touch of genius if you ask me yeah you got to be really free in your mind to allow change to happen organically even for you okay we don't all have to be the same not in sex, not in the business that we do, in the success that we have, in the, the lifestyle that we have, and so on. So consider that. Okay, another mentality shift is um, proactively seek and apply solutions for your well-being. So one thing here that I've seen with a lot of people is that um, they, they notice that there's a problem, they agree that they want to change, but because you encounter a certain amount of resistance, you might lose motivation. Yeah. You might get um, discouraged or just lack energy to carry on, to push through, through all the stuff that comes up. Change isn't easy. Okay. So that's one thing that, you know, you proactively seek and apply solutions that is the hardest thing when it comes to changing yourself, to staying persistent and, and, and persevere over long periods of time. Change is not something that happens overnight. I'm gonna give you an example from nature. Anything like you have a, I don't know, an entire ecosystem. 
the only sudden change that you're going to see abruptly overnight, major change, is when a, a fire breaks out, a tornado comes, a lightning strikes and burns down everything, an earthquake happens and a lot of stuff is messed up, or something negative. So sudden, abrupt, drastic change is usually, you, you'll see it in nature, negative. Positive, constructive, um, healthy, evolutionary change takes time. Nature is a very good teacher when we're not separate from nature. So it takes time for us to grow into what we want to grow into. Okay. And the last thing here, speaking of um, mentality shift, you need to decide something. Are you in or are you out? So if you're bitching about, I'm just saying, Okay, you might not be bitching about this, but if you have a major reason to be pissed off <laughs> with your partner because of the way they engage or not engage in sex with you, then at a certain point, yes, you can work on yourself and only yourself. And in some cases, they might be inspired consciously or not to change something about them. And you might see a transformation in them as well. And the story that I mentioned at the previous point with my client recently married, if you read that, you're going to see exactly that. But ultimately, you still got to decide, are you in or are you out? Because just like you're pissed off, you know, with them about sex, they're pissed off with you about other things. Okay, you're not perfect either. Nobody is. And they're also going to have to decide, okay, am I in or am I out with this person? I can't change this person. I can only be here with them and, and do my best to be happy, you know, take care of my happiness with them. Or if not, then does it make sense for me to bitch around or, or just hold this grudge over long periods? Is that the kind of relationship that I want? I know that I'm, you know, not married and maybe you are married for 10 or 20 years and this is like, who's this person telling me what to do? But it does make sense. I mean, if you've invested 10 or 20 years with this person, that's a huge, huge time. Okay, are, are you like, are you gonna keep doing that or do you wanna change the way you show up in your relationship? You can't control how they show up in the relationship. You can only control how you show up and do your best. And if you can't change anything, you know, no matter what you do, they're not going to change something about them. Then can you be with them in that relationship and be happy with what it is and, and let go of that grudge? That's not something that I expect you to answer, you know, right now as you're listening to this video. But if you ever take therapy, psychology or psychological counseling sessions or, um, coaching sessions, this question is going to come up eventually. Can you be happy with what is? I'm assuming that you've married this person or you've partnered with this person and stayed with them for as long as you did because there is more to it than just the sex. By the way, that's the comment that I, uh, my answer to the comment that I got on my channel. I feel you. I know that there are many explanations for why, you know, people or women might not always engage into sex. But that being said, if you're still there in that relationship, there's more to that relationship than just sex. And the more besides sex is probably more important to you because you're staying with them. So it's only a question of, am I gonna stay here and look at this in a different way? Because if I wanna stay with this person, then is there a way that I can be in this relationship in a much better way for me and for them? They'll feel it just as you'll feel it. If they hold a grudge against you or they're dissatisfied with something, you know, about something with you, then you'll also feel it and they'll also feel it. And that still, that still affects the quality of your relationship. Okay. Now back to my notes. Okay. And the last thing that I pointed out here is seek external help, obviously. And there's a poor way of doing this. And there's a, 
a smart way of doing this. So the poor way of doing this, and I've actually seen in my community, I've had a couple of women that came up complaining about the, either one of them was complaining that she wasn't having enough sex or the kind of sex that she wanted with her partner. The other one was complaining that she wanted to explore and, and try on new things. And this guy was just, you know, super um, ironic and sarcastic about everything that she brought up. And he was also uh, pretty abrupt in intimacy. So these two women throughout the years, they came into my community or our community and they've shared, they focus a lot on this, these negative aspects. And at a certain point, because that we were more women there, we were listening, we were hearing them. And at a certain point, both of them came not at the same time, you know, at different times, they came and shared with us that they got pregnant and decided to, one was also decided to marry and the other one was married. And then she decided to have not just one, but two kids. And it was also like, for me, it was, okay, how do I go about this? I mean, I've heard a lot about the negative stuff and now here's a baby. And at a certain point, I'm like, there must be other reasons here, but they never mentioned them. So that's one poor way of, of seeking help. You come to a, a counselor, um, a coach or a group, you know, communities, and you just bitch about them. You don't mention the good parts, though they are there, and you're obviously still in a relationship with that person, but you only mention the negative part. And everybody around you, including that counselor or therapist or whatever you're seeking help from, basically will not know how to, you know, they eventually they'll have to start, you know, drawing out the good stuff because otherwise they're going to ask you, well, if it's so nasty, why are you there? That is a natural question. So the best way to go about seeking help is to show up in a balanced way and say, these are the good parts. These are the negative parts. Because if you just focus on the negative, it'll just turn into bitching sessions and it's not going to grow anywhere from there. And you obviously can't change the other person just by bitching in a coaching or, or a therapy session. You really need to consider this. And you need to consider, like I'm going to present this perspective also, that you might be doing this with your friends also. You might be bitching about your husband or your wife to your friends or to your family and they might actually get a very narrow or negative perspective because you're only presenting these things that you hate about them and your friends or your family, they're going to start to hate him or her. So you need to be careful how you show up either in seeking external, you know, professional help or even seeking the help of your loved ones. So the other one, the other poor way of seeking help is that you expect that the work that you do in a session or the discussions that you're having with a counselor, with a coach or with your loved ones, family, friends, you expect that if you have those, the problems will be solved. No, uh, I hate to break it to you. And for a very simple reason, nobody can live your life for you. Let me say that again. Nobody can solve your problems for you. Just because you show up in a coaching session or a therapy session, or you speak to your friends or family about something, it doesn't mean that it gets solved. No, you've just um, either unloaded some tension or you've presented the problem and you've started looking for solutions, but you need to apply those solutions in your real life you need to actually live those solutions out in order to change the situation. Otherwise, you're just going to pay money to people in sessions. But if you don't freaking apply, you don't freaking make a change on yourself, then that's a poor way of going about it. You're just going to waste time and lose money or, you know, piss off other people and, and just bug them with all your issues and not solve anything. And the third way, um, well, basically that was the two ways or <laughs> what I said right now. The third way was you expect that the professional will go and find your solution and apply it. 
Um, this one is more subtle. Uh, let's engage in it and still. So people, when they approach a professional, they'll expect that th these professionals tell them what to do. This might work in business, meaning that you seek, um, I don't know, a counselor or um, a consultant. You have a problem in your company and you expect a business, an entire business or just one person to bring you the solution and also apply it for you. Okay, that doesn't happen in therapy sessions. It does happen with friends and family, but that's a very stupid way of going about things. I'm just going to call it for what I think it is. Why is that? Firstly, you're just going to be dependent on those people. Yeah, a consultant. What do you think a consultant? Their interest in a business is to actually cash in money over long periods of time. So if you become dependent on that person, then, you know, your business is going to depend on that person. That's not so bad because businesses can do that. But if you in your life are going to depend in each freaking challenging situation for the same person to bring you a solution, that's not a healthy way. Firstly, the one person that you could or should or might want to consider addressing for this is your partner. The relationship is between you and them. So if you show up in coaching or in session or seeking any kind of other help and you expect those people to tell you the, the solution, that is a very poor way of going about it. The best person to come up with a solution is you and your partner because it's your intimate relationship. I'm just going to say it again. Nobody can live your life for you. Yeah. Okay. So what are the smarter ways to approach, you know, external help? So the first one is stick with a specialist for the long run. Okay. Let's say that you have a, a, a rather big issue, which is not going to be solved in a month. For the long run, what I'm talking about, sometimes it can be even a year that you need to stick with, you know, working on this issue until you figure out what are your resources to tackle the situation. Okay. So stick with a person for the long run. It's not just, you know, I come to you for a session and you give me a solution and that's it. I'm gone. Um, yeah. To my knowledge, if the problem is really big, as in somebody's not having sex with you, then you might want to work on things about yourself also. Because it's usually, you know, it takes two to tango or it takes two to disengage from tango. So, you know, stick with that person for the long run, not just three sessions or four sessions or, you know, find somebody that you're going to work with in the long run to improve yourself. The second one Apply the work that you do in sessions outside of sessions. You know, that's in, from the other point, like the poor way of engaging. You just do work in that session and you expect your entire intimacy to turn around. No, you got to apply in real life. And usually the persons that you go to, they'll start pointing out, okay, this is a resource for you and you might want to apply it more often just for yourself or maybe with your partner or whatever the case is, but you got to take stuff that you do in sessions and apply. When it comes to seeking advice from friends and, and family and other fools, um, I would be very, very uh, careful with the advice that I receive and the advice that other people give me and I apply. You got to filter things out. They got to be filtered out through your how you are, your values, your objective, your desires, and then through the filters of your relationship to the other person. Just because somebody else did in their relationship, that doesn't mean it's good advice for you. That's why a professional will never give you advice. If you want to really work on your issues, they will help you figure out what your resources are, what the things that help you are, and how to tackle a situation with your partner, meaning lack of sex, in order to get to the bottom of things. That is the best way in which they help you. But you need to apply the stuff that you do in sessions in order to see change. The first, the third one, 
um, reach out to them, you know, over, not just in the session. So I've, I've had this with um, two clients so far. So I've had a man and a woman who sought my help. The woman, she actually, you know, we were doing sessions and then from one week to the other, she would call me. I told her, I'm not just here for the one once a week session that we have officially. If something happens throughout the week, call me up. I'm here for you. That's why we're doing one-on-one coaching. Let me know what the deal is or what the issue is. And let's see what we can do in that moment to help you solve it or, you know, help you get a better insight into it. So, you know, really use the person that you're working with. And this also, you know, it depends on the setting, the the setting that you have with them. When I work with somebody one-on-one, I let them know, you can write me an email, you can write me on WhatsApp, you can call me, we can set up, you know, a specific day in which we do homework, because they also get homework, or we talk about what stuff came up for you and how you want to handle it and not wait until the other week comes. So, you know, make the best use of the person that you're seeking. Uh, the fourth thing is to keep track of the positive things that happen. Um, so your partner is not having sex with you, but maybe something is happening, you know, in slow motion, meaning they get more um, physically, you know, on you, meaning they touch you more, they hug you more, they spend more time around you physically, they get more into just the kissing or whatever it is, you see progress. Keep that in your mind first and foremost. It is, that, that's going to be the stuff that you feed on until you see transformation. Usually if you seek somebody's help, they'll point this one out, but you know, that's the best way to use a professional. So keep track of the positive things that come up while you're working with this person and let them know, the specialist, and if possible, let your partner know. Not that you're working with somebody necessarily, but the, that you're seeing change, progress, good stuff, and that you like it. And the fifth thing, get into proactive mode, meaning what can you do best in any given situation? So um, basically seek out to do the best with you know, the, the crisis, you're not having sex with your partner and it's been going on for some time, but what can I do right now to take care of myself? You know, be proactive, get some rest, give yourself a break, um, self-pleasure, seek out pleasure in any healthy, constructive, ethical way that you can, you know, so that you don't sabotage the work that you're doing with a therapist or a counselor and you, you know, start cheating on your partner or whatever. So start to proactively seek solutions also. You know, if you match that with working with somebody, you're going to see progress much faster. And last but not least, this is just, you know, if your partner's not having sex with you right now, there might be other reasons. Maybe the passion is just not there anymore. Maybe you love each other so much or they love you so much, but they're not just not, you know, the, the sexual attraction it just followed its course and it's gone. That can also happen. And if that's the case, then this is worth looking into. I've heard of couples that have lived long enough and have had kids and grown kids and they just, you know, they ended up being really good friends and loving one another, but just not being drawn to each other anymore. They were still sexually active, just didn't feel like having sex with their partners. That's also a possibility. So don't rule that one out either. Whatever it is, you know, um, whether it's something that has been going on with them, or maybe they're, you know, just dissatisfied with what's happening with you, or maybe um, they just don't like sex in general and they never level with you, or maybe they just lived their entire sexual charge with you and they have charge just you know for other people whatever it is the only thing that you can do is really if you can't do this alone then seek help but touch base with yourself connect with yourself within 
and start to see what is the best thing that you can do in that situation. And if you can't, because that's not easy, I, I will give you that, then can you live with the situation as it is right now and focus on other things that you have control or power over in your life and in your relationship? That's also the case. So I hope this has helped you. Um, if this is your case too, you're in a relationship and your partner hasn't had sex with you for a long time, then I hope these things have helped you. If you're a woman, consider joining the Sex Dojo for Women program that I have. There's a link on my channel to it. I'll also put a link under the video. If you're a man, consider booking for a phone call session and we can take a strategic approach at least to see where you are and what might be the best directions for you to go into in order to solve your situation. And otherwise, if you find the content on this channel useful, then subscribe. And you can also support my channel. There's a PayPal button there where you can support my channel so that I can keep moving forward with it. All right, so happy 5,000. We're growing and I will see you soon with other videos. Bye.